Well, it's, it's a healthy time again um, in 1992. Um, actually, the last two or three years, it's been healthy. It's been a back to basics time and a time for artists and bands to be creative and, you know, and be in, inventive. And uh, I guess within the last three years, um, I guess the bigger bands nowadays are like um, the Chili Peppers and the whole Seattle scene, Nirvana and uh, Soundgarden, Pearl Jam, you know, Alice in Chains. And, uh, but it's a really um, good time for everybody who wants to, uh, who wants to you know, be inventive. more about the music, you know, now, as opposed to, um, during the 80s it seemed to go more towards the image, it was like, it was mostly bands with pretty boys in the band and lots of makeup and hairspray getting signed and stuff, and thank God that's all over with, you know, it's really back to, um, being about the music. Some people have complaints, like, you know, oh, the bands, you know, they look like, they dress like, uh, you know, the lumberjack son or something with flannel shirts, but really I think it's great because everybody's kind of just being themselves and yeah, being honest. A, yeah, it's kind of a more generic, you know what I mean? I mean, I feel um, it was really kids being totally disgusted with um, being dictated to by, uh, you know, the, like the big corporate, you know, machine and, uh, you know, the, uh, the radio and this and that. They... They, kids like nowadays, especially with the way the world is, there's a real immediacy and urgency where people want music that um, that they can kind of call their own and kind of acts as kind of a salvation for themselves because the world's real, a real, it's a, it's a real chaotic, crazy time now with, uh, with um, the downfall of the world economies and just um, you know. Everything is kind of like uh, out of whack, you know? And people really need something that they can kind of grasp onto and call their own. And, uh, and, uh, and so that's why I think, um, you know, I mean, a lot of the bands that were more of subcultural at one point are, are the dominant force in music now. Bands like Metallica and, you know, you know, you know Nirvana and people like that. You know? Yeah! It's great to be here in London tonight at the Brixton Academy, of course. This goes out to Gloria and Nick and to John Giddings. Take a seat, Jim. Thank you. 
seems like the music business has gone through a lot of phases, just like the world does. You know, everything goes in a cycle. What comes around goes around. You usually end up going full circle, and it starts all over again. So I, mean, I guess the 90s is just, you know, that point where everything's coming back around. Right. The 60s, everything was real honest and, and open. And then through the 70s and the 80s, it got to be more about big shows and, you know, big productions and stuff. And now it's, it seems like it's just come full circle, like everything's getting back to the honesty point. Yeah. Anything you, you choose. I mean, if you want to uh, play dance music, you can play dance music. If you want to play rap music, you can play. I mean, everything's acceptable now. Right? And it's accepted by all different crowds, too. It's not like you have heavy metal kids and you have punk kids and you have kids that are into rap and kids that, you know, are into uh, house music. It seems like the just the youth is just starting to unite, on, you know, under a single. Like, if you're a music fan these days, you're a music fan. You're not limited to what, you know, one's type of music <clears throat> people don't get on you as much. Yeah, but 
doing the Ramones as far as our fans. I mean, we have a real extreme broad crowd, and it's always been the metal kids and the thrash, hardcore, punk, alternative, you know. I mean, it's really uh, whatever you whatever you, whatever you like. You know, I mean, like our fans are, you know, it's the total spectrum, you know, and also it's as far as color, it's, you know, the total spe spectrum. There's no division. You know, I mean, a lot of bands... Yeah, a lot of bands have one set fan. A lot of metal bands have just metal fans. Our fans are into everything, you know. And they're uh, young, 16, I guess average is the average age nowadays. And they're older and they're whatever they are. <laughs> are real. I mean, we're real people, and we're, you know, I mean, this, this, our lyrics are, uh, you know, we have, we have something to say, you know, and, uh, but at the same time, we're a multi-dimensional band. I mean, our, you know, it's not, we're not, it's any set thing. Our songs are about all kinds, of, they're about life, basically, you know what I mean? And they're, it's real uh, feelings and emotions and experiences, you know? And um, our music is, I mean, we're, we're purists when it comes to uh, you know, rock and roll. I mean, it's like, um, you know, Ramones are an exciting band. We're originals and originators. We, we, we're responsible for the whole punk explosion, let's say. And, um, which, you know, I mean, when we came to Eng England back in 1976, and um, Ramones were the inspiration for the English bands, you know, and, um, and, it's, and it's from 76 with the English bands to Metallica to Nirvana and all these groups now. And basically, they've, um, They've all kind of uh, adapted and adopted our trademark sound as their foundations and injected their own selves to create their own styles and their sound. But I mean, if you listen to all these bands, you hear the Ramones in every one of them. You know? Give me, give me shock treatment! Thank you. 
lot of people also um, always kind of counted on the Ramones for fun. Um, and, you know, always, even with the serious things, it seems like always the way the songs are worded and stuff, it was always kind of comical. Like, you know, they'd always poke fun, even at, like, the president with um, Bonzo Goes to Bitburg, you know, and I think uh, that's one thing that I, before I was even in the band, that I really enjoyed about the Ramones was it was always fun. I mean, just listening to some of the lyrics, it's just, some of them are so funny, you know, but there is a meaning, there is a serious meaning behind it. And that's, that kind of made it, you know, it's like double the enjoyment, you know, because you can relate to it, but it's, you know, it's fun, it's still a good time. It's still entertainment. And that's what music really is all about. After all, it's a form of entertainment. I mean, like, when we started out, everybody was so serious, you know, like, um, you know, because we came off the heels of, say, like, the Vietnam War in America. But, uh, um, you know, I mean, everybody's really full of themselves, real kind of stuffy, like, you know, Dylan and Tom Baez and all this and that. Everybody was, you know, you know, I mean, I mean, the one thing that we all share is that we have kind of a dark sense of humor about us. You know, I mean, and it's really, um, I mean, it was, the fun was missing from music back when we started. It. I mean, but, but you know, the, the, that kind of dark sense we all you know, share. I mean. I want to live, I want to 
Around 74 when we started up, like one song would last the full side of an album. You know, I mean, uh, we were, you know, the songs we grew up on, you know, like, well, me and John anyway, because we're older than CJ. But, um, and John's older than I am. But, uh, <laughs> but um, you know, I mean, we, I mean, all the, the best songs were, if you couldn't do it in three minutes, don't bother. You know what I mean? Like, whether it be the Beatles or the Stones or the Who or uh, whoever it was, you know what I mean? You know, things got um, totally self-indulgent, you know what I mean? With the uh, keyboard solos and the drum solos, the guitar solo, all the bullshit, you know what I mean? So basically what we did was kind of a, disassemble it all and reassemble it and put the guts and fun and spirit and color and you know and all the good stuff back and all the good great elements and give it a good kick in the ass and put it on so it on on you know on track. <laughs>
sounding cliche or anything. I mean, there is a real love about what we do. And the Ramones are larger than us all as individuals. You know what I mean? And, um, you know, I mean, like, the reason you, you got into music in the first place was because um, you liked exciting music and you like, I mean, the Ramones really are like nobody else. We're, we're our own breed of band and, and our fans are their own breed. Totally loyalists and uh, die-hard fanatics, you know. 
And like the fans too kind of like keep you fueled and focused, you know, because a lot of times, I mean, well, we've been together like 18 years now. And, um, the bird out in the home. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you know, and, um, you know, you, you don't, we, we're on the road all the time. I mean, we, we go, we're a live band. We go out and play all the time. So, like, you know, of course, you're not always going to get along with everybody. And, um, but when you get out and play, everything else seems kind of trivial. You know, when you get out and play, you forget about whatever it is that's bugging you. And you, uh, you know, because the, the crowd is just that special. You, know? you get reminded every night. If you have a bad day on the road, once you step on stage, it, you know, that's it. You know why you're there. You know why you're still doing it. If, um, if we didn't play as often as we did, it, it would probably be a lot harder. But because we tour constantly, because we're always on tour, we, um, you know, we constantly, we're out there in front of the people. When you step out onto stage, you have to, to be able to understand what we're trying to say. You have to picture it. You step out on stage in front of maybe 3,000, 4,000 people, and people are just losing their minds in front of you. You know, totally, you know they don't do anything even close to this in their normal everyday life. When you see how much emotion you bring out of people by just being up there playing songs, it's like, hey, you know, that, that keeps you from wanting to play forever, you know? I mean, I could honestly play the rest of my life if I could, you know, get out on stage and feel like that every night. Well, maybe just perhaps you remember Pet Cemetery. Watch your drink, that! <laughs> told by uh, people who have been fans for a long time they feel like this album is probably the best album since like Rocket to Russia not that you know um, the albums afterwards were uh, bad albums or anything it's a lot of people just said it, it sounds like you know you guys are 
a brand new band again. You know, like I, you can really feel everybody was so excited about this record when we went in. We were working with Ed, like I said before, again. Um, you know, we were all going to be in the studio together for the first time and stuff. And I think the excitement that everybody felt came through in their playing, and Ed just really captured it and got it onto the onto the record as we played it, and with as little, you know, as possible. And I think it really comes across as an exciting album. It's, Great songs on the record. We got a good producer. Even the album cover is really cool, you know. It's just a good package. And yeah, it was a good time for us. Like a star in my own right, as a person and uh, an individual, I always felt as you know. I mean, um, I just like I really you know think about it. I I'm myself, and uh, and that's how I uh, approach. You know, I don't feel I don't go oh I'm a big star or any of that shit. I'm just me basically. You know, I feel I'm grounded and um, you know I'm me. I don't want to be like anybody else. You know, I'm happy being myself. I don't want to be like Bono. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm real happy about what we've accomplished and continue on to accomplish. And I mean, the Ramones were a unique band, and I mean, in some ways, you know, we haven't had that success the way some bands have, you know, the ones like Elton John and all that stuff. But I think we're probably more famous than they are. Let's have 